Thursday, March 2nd, 1995, 11 p.m. My mother-in-law says, leave the house. Luckily for me, my husband agreed. And here I am thinking in my head, I've got this. I'm going to call the one person who has always supported me. He's never said no for anything. So as we're walking out, I call. I say, Papa, I'm coming home. And Papa says, why? And I explain that the cultural clashes are just too much. We're just not hitting it off. And he says, sorry, you can't come home. I was devastated. I'm the apple of his eye, his only daughter, and he tells me, you can't come home. Of course, he explained the optics of him supporting what he thought was a temporary rebellion would hinder his relationship later on with my in-laws. I was like, fine, at 23, newly married, I felt betrayed and helpless. Eleanor Roosevelt has said, a woman is like a tea bag. You can't tell how strong she is until you put her in hot water. Well, they put me in hot water, and guess what I did? If the slide would move, this is what I did with the hot water. Well, in the hot water. I created the apparel group. 20,000 plus employees, 80 plus brands, 2,025 plus stores, and in 14 countries and growing. So how did we do this? How did I go from a place of abandonment to creating this? Well, first of all, you have to marry a really, really smart man who likes working hard. And secondly, luckily for me, a lot of my relatives have given me a lot of gold in my wedding. I sold the gold that I got in my wedding, and I got 47,000 rials. Saudi Reals. That was the starting capital. My poor father, who said to me, I can't help you with money or shelter, said, I'll do everything else for you. So he gave me connects, gave me contacts, helped me sub-franchise, and that was the way Apparel Group was formed. Oops. And we already tested this. <laughs> We're on slide number three, guys. So, fresh out of college, we had a very unique management style. One of our key differentiators was how we rewarded people. Back in 1995, we were paying a salesman 150 US dollars per month, but he started making commissions of over a thousand dollars. And that's what got the buzz going. But for us, stumbling upon Nine West as our first brand in 1996 is what was a game changer. After that followed Aldo, Tommy Hilfiger, Calvin Klein, Levi's will be here all afternoon if I list them all, but you get the idea. I love acronyms, so I summarized my entrepreneurial journey for you in an acronym called MARI. Mary. My father and my husband are my two mentors. They both put me in a growth mindset whether it's professionally or personally. COVID taught us to pivot and adapt. With 2,200 stores closed during the lockdown period, we jumped in on our e-commerce platform. What would have taken us three years, we managed to do in three intense long months. Risk, had we not failed with those initial few brands in the beginning, we would not know how to grow and scale. Relationship capital, my husband has taught me this, that no matter whom you get in touch with on your journey, make sure you maintain a relationship with them. They are, that's a really key important factor. Why? So why is actually the question we should all answer first, right? Why do we start this business? Why should we go down this road? Why did Seema choose marry? Humor me, please close your eyes and just listen to my voice. Imagine a CEO. Imagine a nurse. 
Imagine someone crying in the office. Imagine someone leaving early to pick up their kids. Please open your eyes and look at the slide. Let's acknowledge the gender biases that we all hold. How many of you stereotyped each of these situations? Thank you for raising your hands. <laughs> I'm just saying, this is what we are perpetuating. We're creating this. For example, we also tell our daughters that career is a distraction that you do before you're actually going to get married and settle down. I don't know a lot of Indian parents in our society that actually encourage a career, or a strong one at that, because we need you to be agile and adapt to wherever your husband is living and what he's doing. That's an issue for us. According to, I'm trying to move, yeah. According to the 2021 statistics or data, 8.2% of the Fortune 500 companies were led by women. 8.2%. Come on, that's a shame. That's a shame. No, that's not something you applaud on. That's a shame. According to the International Labor Organization, only 47% of the adult female population is in the labor force. I hope the next time I see all of you, the needle has moved on all these issues. And it's up to us to make that happen. To me, the arena represents the various spheres of life where women have often been either underrepresented or face challenges. That could be the boardroom, it could be the political arena, it could be the scientific community, it could be any other such field. As business leaders in this room, it's our responsibility to create a workplace that promotes equality and a culture of inclusivity and respect. In order for us to change the rules without leaving the arena, I believe we need to focus on three key areas. Empowerment, mentorship, and support. So I would like to share with you the five people that bring that to my life every single day. I'm going to start with my poor father who came to Riyadh not knowing that his daughter is going to throw him under the bus in the first paragraph that she speaks on stage. Sorry, Papa. <laughs> it's his first time in Riyadh. He's never going to forget this. So my father taught me empowerment. He told me, Seema, argue with me, reason with me. If I agree with you, I'll let you do it. That happened when I wanted to go to university, and it happened when I wanted to marry a man outside of my community. My husband, he doesn't hear this very often, so he's looking a bit shocked and a bit worried. He is the wind beneath my wings. He's the support every woman should have. Every time I had a child, he made me come back to work. And that's why I can stand tall here today and say I'm an integral part of the business that I helped fun found. Well, I found it. My first daughter, poor thing, as first-time parents, what do we not do to them? She still loves me unconditionally. And a sidebar to that, she's currently spearheading our joint venture with Nika. If any of you know Nika, which is the largest beauty platform out of India, her mentor by default is Falguni Nair, who started her business at the age of 50 plus. I don't want to tell you what she IPO'd at or what she's worth today. Please do go Google it. It's an incredible, empowering story. My middle child blows me away every time because she manages to launch her own 100% sustainable athleisure brand F5 at the age of 15, and she manages school and a very hectic social life. My youngest, there's a 16 years age gap between my eldest and my youngest. So in the words of a comic I heard recently, I don't know him very well, but the nanny says he's perfect. 
Just kidding. He's 10, a massive, messy fan, and to me, he's a crystal child. I think the time has come for us to seize, and I hope that my daughters will live in a world where the words of Sheryl Sandberg, the ex-COO of Facebook, will ring true. In the future, there will be no female leaders. There will be just leaders. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. My name is Seema Ganwani Ved, and I will see you in my arena. <laughs>